Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through a quick review of adding fractions. If it's been a while and you need a quick refresher, this should be helpful, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, continuing your education as an adult, or just learned this recently. Really, no matter where you're at, here are a couple of examples to help you out. Let's jump into number one, where we have 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths. Now, when we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So we always look to see if our denominators are the same. If they're the same, we can add. So in the case of number one, we have a seven and a seven for our denominator. So we have a common denominator right away. That means we can add. So we add the numerators. Three plus two is five. So this is going to equal five. And then we keep our denominator the same. Five sevenths is our answer. We can always look to see if we can simplify. The only common factor between five and seven is one. So we are done. Five sevenths is in simplest form and our final answer. Again, for number one, we had a common denominator of seven. So we were able to add right away. Let's move on to number two, where we have four ninths plus one sixth. So for this one, we do not have a common denominator in our original problem. So we need to find a common denominator and then rename both of our fractions with that common denominator before we can add. Now we're going to find a common denominator between nine and six by finding the least common multiple between nine and six. And that's going to be our least common denominator. You may be able to think about what that least common multiple is, but as a review, let's write out some multiples of both nine and six in order to find that least common multiple. And again, that's going to be our least common denominator. So I'm going to come to the bottom here. So nine and six. Now we can list the multiples of nine and six by just counting up by nine and six. Multiples go on forever. So what we can do, we can just start with four or five, see if we have any in common, and then we can go from there. So let's write out four multiples of nine. So nine, 18, 27, 36. Let's write out four multiples of six and then see if we have any in common. So six, 12, 18, 24. It looks like we have 18 in common here, and that's going to be our least common multiple. We're going to use that for our common denominator. So I'm going to rename these fractions underneath the original problem with that denominator of 18. So when we rename, we're going to use equivalent fractions. So we're not changing the value of the problem at all. We need to think, how do we get nine to equal 18? Well, nine times two is 18. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top in order to keep this equivalent. So four times two is eight. 8 eighteenths is equivalent to 4 ninths, but we renamed that original fraction of 4 ninths with that common denominator of 18. So again, we're not changing the value of the problem at all. We're just renaming with that common denominator so we can add. Let's do 1 sixth. So how do we get 6 to equal 18? 6 times 3 is 18. So we need to do the same thing to the top in order to keep this equivalent. One times three is three. Now we have the fractions in our original problem renamed with that common denominator of 18. So we can add, let's add our numerators. Eight plus three is 11. And then we keep our denominator of 18 the same. Always look to see if you can simplify 11 eighteenths, the only common factor between 11 and 18 is one. So we are in simplest form. And this is our final simplified answer, 11 eighteenths. 
So there you have it. There's a quick review of adding fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.